Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are doing fantastic today, and welcome to Amtrak Vacation's presentation today. One of my favorite topics, traveling Canada by rail with Amtrak Vacations. Very, very exciting. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Nick Bunnell, and I have been with Amtrak Vacations proudly for five years now. Um, very exciting. I've done quite a bit of rail travel throughout the United States, throughout Canada itself, as well as throughout Europe. So it's something I'm very, very passionate about. And I'm excited to share a lot of this great information with all of you today. Uh, definitely stay tuned towards the end of the presentation today as we have some really great uh, discounts for all, all attendees, as well as one lucky person will win an, a $100 Amtrak Vacations gift card. And also, too, throughout the presentation, do not forget to download the handout where that arrow is pointing. That'll highlight a lot of the great information that we're going to cover today and some of the great packages. As well as throughout the presentation, if anyone has any questions at all, please feel free to input them into that questions box, and I will answer any questions towards the end of the presentation today. Very, very exciting. So if you have any questions at all throughout today's presentation, please feel free to jot them into that box, and I'll answer them a bit later. So first and foremost, before, we're going to ask, why Amtrak Vacations? Well, there's several reasons why. First off, traveling by rail is a bucket list experience. In fact, we surveyed last year all of our travelers as to why they chose traveling with Amtrak with Amtrak Vacations. And the number one consensus answer we saw was that traveling by rail was a bucket list trip. If you think about it, people have done the ocean cruises. They've done the all-inclusives to Mexico and the Caribbean. You've done the Walt Disney World trips. You've now done Concord River Cruising. You're looking for something fun, something different, something unique. The rail can satisfy each and every single one of those needs. There's room to roam. Take what you know about being on an airplane or on a motor coach where you can't really get up and move around because the space and you really just can't move on, move around on those. With Amtrak, you're actually encouraged to get up and move around. Go visit the cafe car, visit the dining car, or visit my personal favorite, the observation car. We'll touch base on those a little bit later. There's a lot of hassle. There's none of this business about checking in 24 hours ahead of schedule or showing up two to three hours ahead of you know your departure time. How does an hour to four? How does 45 minutes to an hour sound? Because that's typically the average time most people will show up prior to their departure time on Amtrak, making this as really as hassle-free and as worry-free as possible for you. City to city service. Now, I love this because one thing I dislike are those long airport transfers. You know, you fly into a place and lo and behold, you still have an hour long drive to get you to where you need to be. Well, with Amtrak, we go typically from downtown to downtown. So you avoid those long airport transfers. Look at New York uh, Penn Station. It's right in the mid heart of midtown Manhattan. Look at L.A. Union Station. It's right in the heart of downtown Los Angeles. So look at Chicago Union Station, Amtrak's hub station. That is in the heart of the downtown area of the Loop of Chicago. We get you to where you need to be as quickly as possible. You can start your sightseeing off and start your vacation off the right way. S satisfy your hunger. Now, this will touch base on once again just a little bit later as well. I just want you all to know that whenever you do upgrade to sleepers, meals on the train are automatically included. You won't want to miss out on that as the dining on Amtrak is fantastic. And lastly, flexibility. Almost every single one of our trips operates on a daily basis, so you can really travel when you want to travel. With just the exception of a handful of our seasonal national parks, almost every single package operates on a daily basis, so you can travel really when you want to travel. Now, I love showing this map as well because it really amazes me how extensive Amtrak's system really is. In fact, Amtrak services 46 out of the 48 continental states here in the United States, with the exceptions of South Dakota and Wyoming. And in 20, 2017, Amtrak set their ridership record with just around 33 million riders, which would put Amtrak, if they were an airline, they would have been the sixth most flown airline in the world, which is very impressive. So I got a couple of fun little slides that really highlight some of the uh, benefits of traveling by rail. So, so this is one of my favorites, first and foremost. There's no pesky middle seat on board the train. You know, you have... You've, you know, when you go on an airplane, you get you can get that middle seat, and no one wants that ever. That's the most it's the least desirable seat in the house. I can tell you, I actually just had it myself, and it was not a fun time. And I was on about a six-hour flight, and I was sandwiched between two giant people, and it was just not an enjoyable time. Well, with Amtrak, we work in rows of two, so you get two big seats on one side, two big seats on the other side, so you can truly maximize how comfortable you are on board the train. There's no need to spend your day sitting in traffic. In fact, we have a saying we like to use around here. Why not take the road less traveled? That road being Amtrak. All you have to do is kick back, relax, and let us do the driving for you. No one's going to get in the way of our rails. No need to be confined to your seat. Once again, you know, unlike these motor coach tours where you're stuck in this tiny little uncomfortable seat for hours upon hours and you can't get up and move around. With Amtrak, you can get up and move around. Go visit all the different types of cars and mingle with your fellow riders. 
And lastly, my absolute favorite. What do we see on the left-hand side? We see clouds, right? It's kind of boring. If you think about it, really, clouds look the same no matter where you go in the world. But if you look at the right-hand side, you see pristine beaches, you see big cities, you see mountains. So these are just some of the examples of some of that beautiful landscapes that... Um, these are just some of the most beautiful landscapes that really can be utilized and seen from the comfort of an Amtrak train. So we're lucky here in the United States, if you think about it, really. We have every type of landscape imaginable. We have those pristine beaches, big cities, mountains. But we also have deserts, rainforests. We have the, pra the plains and prairies. We have small-town America, and all of it can be experienced from the comfort of an Amtrak train. And keep in mind, too, any of these trips can start or end at any of the 500 Amtrak stations. Or alternatively, if you wanted to fly to your start destination or fly home from your end destination, it is completely up to you. And we offer so many different types of vacation packages that can really cater towards any type of traveler. First, we have our independent rail journeys. Now, these are our multi-city, multi-state, week-long to even up to 16-day-long trips. They're incredibly comprehensive as they cover quite a bit of ground. So if you are looking for a bit of a longer trip, these are the ones for you. We have our family adventures, which focus on the on you know the family. So if you are doing a large family trip or multi generational trip, there is something for everyone on these. Um, from grandparents to grandchildren, they are there is something for everyone. We have our rail and sails, which combine the wonders of an Amtrak journey, but also with an Alaskan cruise to out of Seattle or Vancouver. So you get two completely different travel styles, all rolled up into one amazing package. We have our rail getaways, which are our single city two to three night long trips. If you're looking to get away maybe just for a couple of nights or maybe you have a long weekend, these are the perfect packages for you. And lastly, national parks, some of our most popular destinations here in the United States. We actually hold our own allocations at some of the most sought after national park lodges that we have the space for you and that we can help get that space. So let's hop right into some of our top packages and we're going to go over... So our most popular one, first and foremost, this is our Canadian Rockies Discovery eastbound with Seattle, which, as you can see, it visits the Canadian Rockies, one of the most beautiful areas in the United States. I actually just went up there myself back in um, October. So this package is something I actually have experienced firsthand and I absolutely loved. So this trip starts off with one night in Seattle, right in the heart of downtown Seattle. And while we're there, we're going to have admission to the Space Needle, which is Seattle's most iconic landmark, as well as the Chihuly Garden and Glass Museum, which is a museum all about uh, Chihuly's headquarters museum. Now, for those that aren't familiar, Dale Chihuly is this really great artist that makes these beautiful glass sculptures that look like flowers. And this is his actual headquarters museum, and it's situated right at the foot of the Space Needle. Now, once our fun in Seattle is all done for that one night, we're going to hop aboard Amtrak's most scenic regional train, which is the Cascades, which will take up to Vancouver. We'll get into Vancouver. And we'll do three nights in a downtown Vancouver hotel. And while we're there, we're going to have a hop on hop off sightseeing tour of Vancouver, as well as the admission tickets to the Vancouver Lookout, which is the observation level at Harbor Center Tower, which is the tallest building in the city of Vancouver. It's really fantastic. And while we're in Vancouver as well, we will get a day trip out to Victoria, the capital city of British Columbia. And while we're there, we will have the famous afternoon tea at the Fairmont Empress. You're going to feel like you're a member of the royal family as this is one of the most regal experiences one can have. Now, after our fun in Vancouver and Victoria are all said and done, we're going to hop aboard Via Rail's Canadian train, which is the overnight train. We will take from Vancouver up to Jasper. We leave in the evening. We arrive into Jasper the following afternoon. In Jasper, we are not. In Jasper, we will be doing two nights in one of the lodges in Jasper, right in centrally located. While we're there, we're going to have a scenic sightseeing tour of Jasper National Park. So we'll be able to experience that. Once our fun in Jasper is all done, we can then hop aboard a motor coach transfer, but it's also going to be a full day tour that brings us down into the Canadian, we're going to be going through the Ice, Columbia Icefields Parkway, uh, which is quite nice because you'll actually get an opportunity to go on board one of those Ice Explorer vehicles that go actually get to go across the glacier, and you'll get an opportunity to actually go walk onto the glacier. And that will bring us down into Banff, and we'll get down into Banff, and we'll do two nights in a centrally located lodge in Banff, and while we're there, we're going to have the Mountains, Lakes, and Waterfalls tour, which is a full-day tour that utilizes a lot of the famous, well, mountains, lakes, and waterfalls of the region, and that does include a stopover and a highlight of um, Lake Louise as well. So you'll be able to experience that. Along with this too, you'll do the Glacier Skywalk, which is the uh, um, gondolas that will bring us up into Sulphur Mountain in 
Banff, which is quite nice. Once our two nights in Banff are done, we will then transfer you down to Calgary, and we'll end the trip with one night in Calgary, and from there, most people will fly home. So this one's an 11-day, 10-night. We get nine nights hotel, one night, one way on board Amtrak and v- V-Rail and coach accommodations. In, v- in Seattle, we'll get admission to the Space Needle and the Chihuly Garden and Glass Museum, and in Jasper, we'll get... Um, in Vancouver, we'll get a hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour, as well as admission to the Vancouver Lookout. And we'll also get the afternoon tea at the Fairmont Empress on our day trip to Victoria. And in Jasper, we'll get a sightseeing tour of Jasper National Park. We get the Icefields Parkway excursion down with the Columbia Icefields, as well as the Mountains, Lakes, and Waterfalls tour. And I will say this tour, on the overnights on the train, we can definitely upgrade to the sleepers. You'll get a private room with beds, shower access, and your meals on the train will be in. Now let's take another pop look at one of our top trips for 2018. This is our Glacier National Park in the Canadian Rockies by rail. So you get to two, visit national parks on both in on both sides in both the United States and Canada. And this trip is amazing in itself. So you get to visit Glacier National Park. So we do the overnight train from Chicago to Glacier National Park. We arrive in the Glacier Park. We do two nights at the Glacier Park Lodge, which is the oldest of the Glacier Park Railroad hotels. Uh, While we're in Glacier Park, we will get two tours included, which the first is the Two Medicine Valley Boat Cruise, which is a boat ride in Two Medicine Lake situated in the Two Medicine Valley. The second tour is the Big Sky Circle Tour. Now, the Big Sky Circle Tour is the main tour of the park. It's a full day tour that utilizes the Going to the Sun Road, which is the main highway that runs right through the middle of Glacier National Park. Now, once our fun Glacier Park is all done, we'll then do an overnight train on the Empire Builder, continuing over to Seattle. When we get into Seattle the following morning, we'll switch over to the Cascades, which will take up to Vancouver. When we get into Vancouver, we'll do two nights in a centrally located hotel right in Vancouver. While we're up in Vancouver, we'll have, a once again, a multi-day hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour, as well as the admission to the Vancouver Lookout. And then we'll do the overnight train on the Via Rail train to Jasper. We'll get up into Jasper, and we'll do the, we'll have one night in Jasper in one of the lodges up there. And we will also have that Icefields Parkway excursion. That will bring us down into Banff. And when we get into Banff, we'll do two nights in a centrally located lodge right in Banff. And while we're there, we'll have, once again, the admission to the Glacier Skywalk and Discovery Center. So we'll be able to take the gondolas right up to Sulphur Mountain and do the Skywalk at the, atop, the, atop Sulphur Mountain, as well as we'll have the sightseeing tour of Lake Louise and Banff as well. So just to highlight this one, it's an 11-day, 10-night. We get the Glacier Park. In Glacier Park, we get the two tours, the Big Sky Circle Tour and the Two Medicine Valley Boat Cruise. In Vancouver, we get a hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour as well as admission to the Vancouver Lookout. In um, Jasper, we'll have the Icefields Parkway excursion as well as in, and in Banff, we'll have the admission to the Glacier Skywalk and Discovery Center along with the sightseeing tour of Lake Louise in Banff. All in all, it's seven nights hotel, two nights on board Amtrak and one night on board Via. Once again, all those nights can definitely be upgraded to sleeping accommodations. We'll get a private room with beds shower access and meals on the train will be included. So let's take a look at another one of ours. I love this trip itself. This is our Seattle, Vancouver and Victoria rail journey. So this one does not visit the Canadian Rockies, but it does puts the focus more on the Pacific Northwest. So this trip does two nights in downtown Seattle. While we're there, once again, we'll have a hop on hop off sightseeing tour, which will take us around Seattle on a big loop. We can get off and on as we please all the different sites and attractions Seattle has to offer. It'll take you over by the Space Needle, um, as you can see right on your screen. It'll take you over the Pike's Place Market. Hopefully you'll be able to see them throw the fish. It'll even take you over to the original the original Starbucks. So for my coffee lovers, that's definitely uh, worthwhile checking out. Along with all of this, we also get the admission to the Space Needle as seen right on your screen, and the Chihuly Garden and Glass Museum as well. Once our two nights in in Seattle are all done, we'll hop aboard the Cascade train, and we'll take that up to Vancouver. When we get to Vancouver, we'll do two nights in a centrally located hotel right in Vancouver. And while we're there, we'll have a hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour, as well as admission to the Capilano Suspension Bridge, which is one of the world's longest freestanding suspension bridges. It's actually really neat. It's, It's completely over the top of one of those Pacific Northwest rainforests. And then from Vancouver, we will take the clipper ship or the ferry out to Victoria. And while we're in Victoria, we'll do two nights in a centrally located lodge hotel in Victoria. And while we're there, we're going to have the afternoon tea at the Fairmont Empress. We're going to have a hop on hop off sightseeing tour, as well as the admission tickets to the Bouchard Gardens, which is the thing to see in Victoria. It's absolutely amazing. So this trip right here is a seven day, six night. We get 
uh, in Seattle will get a hop on hop off sightseeing tour, admission to the Space Needle, admission to the Chihuly Garden Glass Museum. In Vancouver, we'll get a hop on hop off sightseeing tour, and admission to the Capilano Suspension Bridge. And in Victoria, we'll get the afternoon tea at the Fairmont Empress, a hop on hop off sightseeing tour, as well as admission tickets to the Bouchard Gardens. All in all, it's six nights hotel. We get one way on board Amtrak in coach accommodations. This is another one of this has actually been one of our top Pacific Northwest trips for quite some time now for the past couple of years. This is our northern exposure, which, as you can see, visits, you know, this one does Portland, Seattle and Vancouver. So we'll start off with two nights in Portland, Oregon. We'll do two nights in a downtown hotel. And while we're there, we'll have a multi day hop on hop off sightseeing tour of Portland, as well as admission tickets to the Oregon Historical Society Museum. Really neat museum. It's all about the history of the Pacific Northwest in Oregon. They actually have some really neat um, artifacts and really neat exhibit on the Lewis and Clark expedition. From Portland, we'll then hop aboard the Cascades train. We'll take a couple hour long train up to Seattle. We'll get up to Seattle and we'll do two nights in a downtown hotel in Seattle. And while we're there, we'll have admission to the Space Needle and the Chihuly Garden Glass Museum, as well as a sightseeing city tour of Seattle. And then we'll continue on the on the um, Cascades. We'll go up to Vancouver. And in Vancouver, we're going to have admission to the Space Needle. Uh, we're going to have um, on this one, we're going to have a hop on hop off sightseeing tour as well as admission tickets to the Vancouver Lookout. It's just some really neat cities, um, some really neat stuff, and you can definitely have tons, tons to offer while you're up there. In Portland, we'll have a multi-day hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour, as well as admission to the Oregon Historical Society Museum. In Seattle, we'll have admission to the Space Needle and the Chihuly Garden Glass Museum, as well as a sightseeing city tour. And in Vancouver, we'll do a multi-day hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour, as well as admission tickets to the Vancouver Lookout. All in all, it's one night hotel. Or uh, one night on Am one way on Amtrak from Portland to Seattle and Seattle to Vancouver on the Cascades. It's six nights hotel all together. Now it's time for one of my favorite trips. Something that some cities I'm very very familiar with. I've done quite a bit of extensive travel to each one myself. This is our New York and Eastern Canada. Very very popular. This trip starts off, and especially if you're coming out of anywhere on the East Coast, this is very easy to pick up, and you get to see some of the best of what Eastern Canada has to offer. So this trip starts off with two nights in the Big Apple itself, right in New York City, right in the city that never sleeps. And while we're there, we will have two nights in a Midtown Manhattan hotel, so you can be right in the heart of where all the action is. And while we're there, we are going to have a hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour of the city of New York, which will take us around um, the city on a big loop, and you can get off and on as you please at all the different sites and attractions. It does include all loops, so you'll have uptown, downtown, Brooklyn, Bronx, and the nighttime loop. Once our fun in New York is all said and done, we will hop aboard the Maple Leaf train, which is a really amazing scenic train, a uh, regional train that will take us from New York through upstate New York and lead us into Niagara Falls, where we're going to do two nights in Niagara Falls at a hotel that's literally going to be steps away from, from the falls themselves, so in such a prime location. And while we're there, we're going to have the Niagara Falls and the Niagara on the Lake tour that does include lunch, which is really beautiful, especially Niagara on the Lake. That area is so beautiful and you get to experience that and along with that too is you get the journey behind the falls which is one of the most popular sightseeing tours that niagara falls has to offer now once our fun in niagara is all done we'll continue on the um maple leaf train and that will bring us up into toronto we'll get up into toronto and we'll do two nights at a downtown toronto hotel right in the heart of the city of toronto and while we're there, we're going to have a hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour of Toronto, as well as admission to the CN Tower, which is Toronto's most iconic landmark. From Toronto, we will then hop aboard Via Rail, which is the Canadian train system. We will do just a couple-hour-long train out to Montreal, one of my favorite cities. And we'll get to Montreal. We'll do two nights in a centrally located hotel right in the heart of downtown Montreal. And while we're there, we'll get a guided city tour of the city of Montreal. Now, this tour will highlight a lot of the key historic sites and key uh, areas of town in Montreal. I definitely will recommend it, taking some time and exploring old Montreal and seeing the cathedral and everything. It's just such a neat city. I also recommend, if you do get some time in Montreal as well, to experience the, um, the Biodome, which is over at the old Olympic Stadium. Really, really neat. They have seven different ecosystems that you can walk through and see all sorts of vegetation and plants and animals from all the different types of uh, ecosystems throughout the world. 
Once our fun in Montreal is all said and done, we will then hop aboard a couple of the via rail for a couple hour long train again, and we'll take that over to Quebec City. And while we're in Quebec City, you're going to do two nights in a downtown Quebec City hotel, typically in old Quebec, which is right where you want to be. And while you're there, you will get what's called a rendezvous with History City Tour, which is a guided city tour of Quebec. A really neat sightseeing tour, and you'll actually get to experience the, some of the best that Quebec has to offer. I think like, going to Quebec City is like going to Europe without leaving North America. It's such a neat, neat town. Highly recommend it if you haven't been there already, because you'd be amazed at how beautiful that city is. So this one right here is an 11-day, 10-night. We get a hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour of New York. In Niagara Falls, we get the Niagara Falls and Niagara on the Lake tour, as well as the Journey Behind the Falls tour. In Toronto, we'll get a mission to the CN Tower, as well as a hop-on, hop-off sightseeing tour. In Montreal, we'll get a Montreal guided city tour. And in Quebec, we'll also get a guided city tour as well. All in all, it's 10 nights hotel with one-way onboard Amtrak and Via Rail. And lastly, we're going to go over Niagara Falls Explorer from New York City. Now, if you are coming from outside of New York City or from outside of the East Coast, not to worry, this tour could easily, anything for Niagara Falls could be easily picked up. It's just a lot of these packages do for Niagara do come round trip from New York because it is the most direct option to get to Niagara Falls. But if you are coming from outside of New York, no need to worry. It's very easy to get to and from. You would just go by means of Buffalo. This package is a six day, five night. We do five nights hotel in a prime hotel uh, location right by the, the falls themselves. While we're there, we'll get admission tickets to the Skylon Tower, which is the observation tower that overlooks the whole entire region of Niagara Falls. We'll get the Niagara Falls and Niagara on the Lake tour, as well as we'll get admission to the IMAX Theater at Niagara Falls, which is an IMAX movie all about the history and the formation of Niagara Falls. It's actually really neat. And lastly, we get dinner at a popular restaurant. I'll tell you, we actually work with this really fantastic restaurant called the Watermark Restaurant. It's in the Hilton Hotel, and it overlooks the falls. It's definitely the, one of the best spots and best vantage points to see the falls themselves, uh, especially during the summertime. If you're traveling during the summer, and if you're going during the weekends, they, Niagara Falls, they do uh, fireworks um, on, I believe, Friday and Saturday nights during the summers. The Watermark is the best spot to see those fireworks it's literally an unobstructed view it's very very nice so keep that in mind and it does include round trip rail to and from new york city to niagara falls now i know i've been talking a lot about the you know about the actual packages and destinations but what about the actual train experience so let's go over that because when we're, i know i've been mentioning a lot about coach and sleepers and upgrade but what is exactly does this all mean well Let's start off with coach, which, as you can see right here, is a pretty standard seat on board the train. But take what you know about airplane seating and picture the exact opposite, because this coach seating on Amtrak is fantastic. So what it is, is during the, uh, as you can see, there are two, it's two big seats on each side. Those seats themselves are typically double the size of your standard airplane seat. Um, the seats themselves recline at a 45 degree angle and they also have a leg rest as well, as you can see. And the leg room is uncomparable. In fact, last year when I traveled, I traveled on um, one of the long distance trains and my colleague I traveled with is six foot six. He could fully ex extend his legs out and stretch them out and still have room to spare. You'll never find that on an airplane. And if you do, you're going to be paying quite the premium for that. So keep that in mind. Now, coach accommodations are great. However, if you are doing if you are doing a night or more on board the train, you're probably going to want to eat. You're probably going to want to take a shower. Neither of which are included with coach seating, so that's why we upgrade to the roomette accommodations. The roomette accommodations are the most popular type of sleeper on board Amtrak. During the day, there's two big seats that face each other with a big picture window in between and a fold-out table. At night, those two seats you see convert to the lower bed, and right above where their head is, it pulls down for the top bed. Now, I do want to make note that with the Romette, meals are included. However, the bathrooms are private but shared. So they would be down the hall, and you would be sharing them with the rest of the people that have Romette accommodations. But they're private. Once you're in there, you're in there. There's no one else. That, there's no one that's going to be coming in and out of there. Um, it's, it has a lock on the door. It's not like a college dormitory or anything like that. So, And it's a full-size bathroom with a full-size shower. Now, you might say, Nick, this looks great, but I want my own facilities in room. Well, not to worry, everyone. We can upgrade you to the bedrooms. The bedrooms are the most are uh, another really type of popular type of sleeping accommodations on board the train. Um, it's a little bit bigger than the roomettes. It's a bit of a different setup. So it's a little bit bigger. It's a bit of a different setup. So where the gentleman is sitting is actually more of a sofa-style seating. 
um, with an extra recliner and captain's chair where the lady is sitting. At night, that sofa-style seating converts to the lower bed, and right above where his head is, it pulls down to the top bed. Now, I will say with the bedrooms, it does have a private toilet, sink, and shower in room for your use and your use alone when you have the bedroom accommodations. And now is the time for my favorite spot on board the train, the sightseeing lounge car. I can tell you when I went on my journey last year on the Southwest Chief, which is the train from Chicago to Los Angeles, other than to eat, sleep, and shower, I did not leave the observation car once because this really is the spot to be in to see. It's really a front row seat to seeing all that amazing scenery that Amtrak has to offer. It has floor-to-ceiling windows with a glass dome top, and the seats actually face outwards towards the windows. I can tell you, last year it was really amazing, actually. So I was doing the Southwest Chief, and really from southern Colorado to through New Mexico and Arizona, the scenery was unbelievable. There were points in New Mexico, it had snow, it was wide open desert plains with snow capped mountains and plateaus. I honestly felt like I was in the Wild West. It was such memorable, um, memorable scenery. And, you know, it was just, it's very, it's very exciting. And I, it was definitely just an example of some of that really beautiful scenery that can really be experienced only from an Amtrak train. And I know I've been mentioning throughout the presentation as well about dining and eating on board the train, but what exactly does that all mean? Well, take once again what you know about airplane food and picture the exact opposite because the dining on board the train is quite nice. In fact, you'd be amazed at the quality of meals that the onboard chef can freshly prepare in this tiny little kitchen on board a train. Take, for example, for, for, uh, for breakfast, there's pancakes and waffles. There's bacon and eggs. There's omelets. For lunch, there's juicy cheeseburgers, grilled chicken salads, pasta dishes. For dinner, there's fish, there's chicken, and there's Amtrak's main dish, the Amtrak Signature Steak, as you can see right on your screen. I had that two nights in a row, folks, and I absolutely loved it, and I know you all will, too. And the whole process is really nice. As soon as you board the train, the dining car attendant comes by, sets up reservation times that you want to eat your meals. When it's time to eat, you head down to the dining car, take a seat in one of these big, comfortable booths with a white linen tablecloth layout. You get to order from a menu like you would at a local restaurant. So you actually get options of what you to eat. And you get to order from a server like you would at a restaurant. So really, if you think about it, Amtrak isn't just transportation, but it's really a hotel on wheels, a restaurant on wheels, and sightseeing on wheels all rolled up into one amazing experience. And I can tell you, we barely scratched the surface of really what we have going on. If you pay a visit to our website at AmtrakVacations.com, if you hover over where that red arrow is, that will navigate and you can then go, go you can go from there and navigate through and see all of our different types of vacation packages as well as all of our destinations and i got some really great frequently asked questions that really highlight some of the you know the most asked questions that we have so can you can you begin these any of these packages in one city and do just do a portion of the package? Yes, any of our trips can be completely customized to your liking. So maybe you want to start it in a particular city, or maybe do just part of a package. By all means, we could do that. Are hotels included in in the itineraries? Yes, hotels are included in all the destinations that you stay at. Can we add days in the national parks to these itineraries? Yes, absolutely. I can tell you, especially with like Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, Glacier Park, people will love to add those into the um, add extra nights there so you can maybe have a day to do a hiking tour or a wildlife tour or any of the additional sightseeing that national park services might have to offer are you permitted to bring your own wine on the train if you enjoy in private yes in fact that's a, um, a another benefit to having one of the sleeping accommodations you're actually allowed to bring on your own alcohol you, you just have to enjoy it in the comfort of your own room you can't bring it into the public areas and it has to be, you cannot bring any glass on board the train. So no bottles, but you can bring cans or, you know, box of, box of wine or anything like that. Just no glass bottles. And lastly, how many sleeping rooms are there on each train? So typically each car has 14 roomettes in five bedrooms. During non-peak season, there can be anywhere from two to three cars of sleepers. And then during peak season, it can range from three to five cars. So it can really vary based on the season and the demand. Now, so you might ask yourself, how do we go ahead and book any of these wonderful vacation packages? Well, you want to give us a call at 1-800-268-7252, and one of our amazing vacations consultants will be more than happy to help you book your dream rail vacation. Actually, they're really great, and they always find some really great uh, value for you. You can book through the website at AmtrakVacations.com, or what I always recommend and what I do for my own personal travel is 
give a call or pay a visit to your local travel agent. They'll be more than happy to help you. I love my local travel agent. It's a great resource and a great, uh, great way to just say, you know, just great services. I love it. They love using their years of expertise to help provide the best vacations possible. And keep in mind too, folks, we offer some great everyday discounts as well. If you're traveling with children ages 2 to 12, the children will get a 50% uh, 50% off of the, the rail portion. Uh, senior travelers age 65 and over get a 10% discount on the rail portion of an Amtrak vacations package. And lastly, if we have any active duty military personnel, you, your spouses, and your dependents get a 10% discount off the rail portion of an Amtrak vacations package just as a thank you for your service. And for everyone as well, here's an exclusive attendee discount for you all today. If you book by February 21st, if you, you upgrade to a sleeping accommodation on any of our packages, whether it be the cabins or the roomettes or whatever, you can save yourselves $100 off per couple. But you need to make sure to do this by February the 21st. And once again, don't forget to download the handout on the side that we have so you can have a lot of this great information that we covered today. And now's the time, too, if you have any questions at all. Once again, I've seen tons of questions coming through. Uh, please fire them away. and I'll be more than happy to answer those questions in just a moment. I see tons of really good ones coming through the presentation today, so it's very exciting. But before we do so, i got to name our winner for our $100 Amtrak Vacations gift card. Today's winner of the gift card is going to be Ruth Bellinger. Congratulations, Ruth. Awesome job. We hope to see you soon on Amtrak Vacations. And for everyone, definitely uh, fi fire those questions away, and I'll be more than happy to answer those. So I'm going to start at the top. So let's see. John's asking, do these trips start? Start in Toronto to Vancouver, or can you start from either city? You can start any of the trips wherever. I mean, I can tell you, especially a lot of the Canadian trips can work in reverse. Um, so you can start in Vancouver or in Toronto. It's completely up to you. David's asking, is electric service available on the coach seating for plugging in a, C a CPAP machine? Yes, absolutely. Almost every other set of coach seats has an electrical outlet. So by all means, you can absolutely utilize the uh, use the, the electric plugs in there. Cassandra's asking, can I bring my cat? Unfortunately, no. And only service dogs are allowed on board Amtrak with Amtrak vacations. I so wish I could bring my cat on the train, but unfortunately, the Amtrak does not allow cats. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Got tons of questions. Cassandra's asking, does Amtrak offer any haunted tours? No, Amtrak does not offer any haunted haunted tours at all. Let's see. Jane, Jane's asking, do you have any brochures about these packages? How do I get some? Yep, to get order some brochures, all you have to do is call that number right on your screen, and our team will be more than happy to order those brochures for you. Ruth, is there a list of departure dates? Is it online? Yes, you can just go on our website and see a list of all the departure dates of our packages. But I can tell you, almost every single one of our packages operates on a daily basis. So you can really travel when you want to travel. Yes, Ruth, does the Niagara Falls Explorer include the Behind the Falls experience? Yes, it sure does. Frank's asking, this is a question regarding your pricing for a single person. Please explain if you have double occupancy policy. So all the prices you've seen throughout the presentation today, you might see in the website or a brochure, are all based are per person based on double occupancy. Now I can tell you about 23% of our travelers do travel solo. Um, so, but we do have a solo supplement. It's just typically, it's not, you know, most play, most tour operators do make it. It's usually double the cost, but ours is is not quite double. But we do. Uh, it is a little. It is a little bit more than the the what the prices you saw today. David's asking if you get a roomette and you're alone, do you pay for one or two? You pay for you would pay for the same room. You would pay for the room regardless. You don't you don't have to share it with a stranger or anybody like that. Let's see. Ralph, are meals included at the hotel accommodations? No. Some, some of the hotels we do work with include breakfast, but that's about it. 
Lori's asking, are all the roomettes in one car or the bedrooms in one car, are they mixed? So, as I mentioned, there's 14 roomettes in five bedrooms per car. Is the sightseeing lounge lounge wheelchair accessible? It is not, unfortunately, because it is on the upper level of the train. Chris Kirsty's asking, could you describe the food options on the trains that don't have a dining car, just a cafe? So the trains that only have a cafe car, the options, you know, typically are like lighter fare. So sandwiches, hot dogs, hamburgers, uh, chips, candy, um, panini sandwiches, things like that. Denise's, is there a webinar on rail getaways? I do not believe there is a webinar specifically on the getaways, but our website, you can see all of the different getaway packages that we have to offer. Kathy's asking, are there sleepers on the Maple Leaf train? Unfortunately, no, because it's a, uh, because it's a regional train. Peggy's asking, can guest rewards points be applied to the cost? Unfortunately, no, we do not work with guest re Amtrak guest rewards at all. Um, the way, the only thing that we could do is we can apply your number in so you can get credit for, your, for the uh, train travel. Jane's asking, do we have packages for the Trans-Canada Via Tour? Yes, we have packages that go from Vancouver all the way as far east as to Halifax or vice versa. Ralph's asking, is Wi-Fi available? On the, only on the regional trains with Amtrak. The long-distance trains do not currently have Wi-Fi. As you can imagine, it's quite a process adding Wi-Fi to a uh, cross-country train. But Amtrak is trying to get that on. So, But uh, just for now, it's just the regional trains. Cheryl's asking, can you add days to the itinerary in cities? Yes, absolutely. By all means, if you want to add as many days as possible in, in, in each, as many as you want, you can definitely do that. Yep, Frank and Gerald both asked about Wi-Fi. Yep, let's see. Terry, can you cool your can, can you cool your drinks in your sleeper room? Yes, if you actually want to bring on board your own cooler, you can absolutely do that. That would count as a personal item. Zena, can you see the falls from your hotel rooms on Niagara Falls packages? Yes, if you upgrade to a Falls View room, you can definitely see the falls from your room. And we all the hotels we do work with do offer Falls View options. It's well worth the upgrade. Susan, are there any trips to the Great Lakes? Unfortunately, we don't offer any packages up in the Great Lakes. Jacqueline, do you have to do the two nights in New York in the New York in New York City stay in the New York and Eastern Canada? No, you do not. If you do want to just start your journey, maybe in Niagara Falls or maybe just depart from New York, you can definitely do that. Karen, is can three people occupy a sleeper bedroom? They cannot. Unfortunately, the bedrooms are are. For two adults only, they will. Amtrak will allow it if it's two adults and one small child. But with the with the bedrooms, two adults. Same with the roomettes. Yes, Vernell, we're definitely going to be uh, set, you know, this is definitely going to be up on our blog. So this presentation so it'll be up by tomorrow. So you can definitely share this with your sister. Jane, can your packages incorporate the Rocky Mountaineer? Unfortunately, we do not work with them. Brendo, there is no station in Mobile, Alabama. Carolyn, we, Amtrak does not go to Alaska, unfortunately. We, the only thing we have is the cruise package. Ruth, yes, the big map with all the lines. Are they interchangeable? All Amtrak, yes. Terry, if the bath bath in your car is filled, how close is the next bathroom? It would be in the next car, but I can tell you, I never once had an issue with it being with being occupied when I needed it. Susan, is the obs observation car an upgrade or included in the package? Yes, the observation car can be utilized by anybody on board the train during any point in travel. Gerald's asking, is there a limit on the number of, of luggage? Yes. Each person is allowed two pieces of carry-on luggage up to 50 pounds each bag, as well as two pieces of check-in luggage up to 50 pounds each bag, as well as two a uh, personal item.
Christie's asking, can you bring your suitcase in your sleeper or remette? You can, but honestly, with the remettes especially, there's not really going to be all too, too much room. Um, what I could recommend is bring a small duffel bag that has things that you'd want to access it, you know, straight away and have easy access to with you. Um, however, if you do, they do have luggage uh, racks at the at the bottom, on the lower level of each uh, car, so you can definitely um, and you can access that during any point of your uh, stay on the train. Let's see, David, can you leave your car at Amtrak station? Is there a charge? So yes, most of the train stations do have long term parking. However, the cost is actually dictated by the by the companies themselves because it's actually it's usually third party companies that operate the parking at the stations, so they kind of dictate their own pricing. So they can really vary from station to station. It's just like at the airports. Let's see. How long is how long of a tra straight shot train ride from San Francisco to New York? Three days, three nights on board the train. Thank you, Dirksen. Ruth, is there a Niagara Falls to Boston trip? Unfortunately, you can't, you not direct. You'd actually go by means of New York City. Ralph, the, uh, that's. That's very strange. No, the observation car is still in existence. Um, I was just on the train myself about a month and a half ago, and I was in the observation car. I was on the Silver Meteor, and it was there. So, yeah, no, the, the observation cars are still on the trains. That's that's strange. Terry, how much are the drinks on the train? On um, typically, I mean, the prices can vary. I can tell you, I think the big beer was like like six or seven dollars for a bottle, and um, wine around the same thing. I think cocktails might be a little bit more. Any more questions, anyone? These questions are great. These are really great questions. Yes. Kirsty's asking, do they sell alcohol in the cafe car? Yes. Yes, they do. Brenda, we do offer cancellation policy. We do offer a, a cancellation trip protection, which allows you to cancel your trip up until for um, up until 12 noon of the business day prior. You would have to call up and cancel. And that's an additional, and the cost on that is based upon the cost of your vacation package. Let's see. We got John. How how and where are the passports checked at border? The border the customs will come on board the train and check passports when crossing into Canada. We unfortunately do not do any packages to to Dodge City. Bobby, do you pay your vacate for your vacation package all at once? No. So usually, typically, it's it's based on a deposit. Um, usually the deposit's paid, and that's based upon the cost of your overall trip. It's usually a, it can vary. Um, and then final payments usually do 60 days prior to your departure date. Dirksen's asking, what is your best coastal trip? Can can you we, we see a lot of beaches? Uh, actually, the best coastal trip is the, on utilizing the Coast Starlight, which is Amtrak's most scenic uh, train. It was actually been voted the most scenic train in North America the past three years. That's the train from Seattle to L.A. or vice versa, L.A. up to Seattle. So, how long is the trip, uh, Becky? How long is the trip from Oxnard to Canada? It all depends on where in Canada you could do it in maybe a night or two if you go looking up go up to Vancouver. Ralph, are all the trips one-way pricing? Yes, a lot of them are. Cassandra, yes, we do have packages to Disney World. Larry, these to these are not escorted trips, so there you do not have a guide with you the whole time. Terry, how fast do the trains usually go? 80 miles per hour, 80 to 85 miles per hour, typical. That's the average speed.
John, yes, there is a trip to get from to up to Halifax. Yes, Becky, there is a trip from Seattle to Cal from California. It's on the Coast Starlight. You would go from um, Los Angeles up to Seattle. It's an overnight on board the train. So it looks like to me, let me see. Karen, how do you get from train to hotel? Do you provide a bus? So a lot of the times you would want to take a quick taxi because usually we try to keep the hotels within a, a short distance away from the ho from the train station. So usually a quick taxi or however, sometimes the hotels could be walking distance or sometimes the hotels even do provide a complimentary shuttle. So it looks like to me we are out of questions for the day. So I do want to take the opportunity to thank all of you for uh, joining me today. I hope it was uh, beneficial for you all. So thank you once again for joining me. If you, if you have any questions at all, please call that number on the screen or biz pay a visit or call your local travel agent. They will be more than happy to help you out. And uh, it's just exciting. Canada is definitely quite popular and uh, it's quite the, quite the place to go to. So until next time, everyone, I hope you all take care. I hope to talk to you all real soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.